Hi guys, today we're here to talk about toilet training. So the first question families ask is, is my child ready? Remember, chronological age is not the same as developmental age. You have to look at where your child's skill set currently is, especially in the area of independent functioning. Are they pulling up and pushing down their pants? Are they able to sit on the toilet? Are they able to wash their hands? If your child's not ready to be toilet trained, in the best case scenario, it's going to take you a really long time to get results. And in the worst case scenario, you're not going to be successful at all. So what do we know? The sensation to have to urinate is usually easier to detect than the one to defecate. So that's why we see urine happen before bowel movements. Unfortunately, in my case, having a seven month old son, we know girls learn faster than boys. Habit training is the first job, and we'll get into that in a moment. And one of the most important things I can stress to you is do not start this job until you're ready because there's no turning back. If you start and you say, you know what, we're not seeing results, or we're going to take a step back, go back to diapers, it can be destructive. It sends those mixed messages, be very confusing to the child. And the child will learn that eventually they'll be rescued by the diaper. If I just hold it long enough, a diaper is going to be put on. If I just wait, the diaper is going to come on. It's kind of like jumping off a diving board. Once you're ready, you jump and there's no turning back. It's important to really figure out your child's natural vo uh, voiding patterns. Is your child a sprinkler or is he a flutter? So sprinklers are kids that urinate a little bit. Half an hour later, they urinate a little bit more. An hour later, they go a little bit more. Flutters are, oh my God, that diaper is full each time they go. Also, look to identify patterns and bowel movements. Pay attention. Pick up the cues. A lot of kids have that look, and you're like, uh-oh, he's making number two, or they go and hide behind a couch. Pay attention to the cues, because that's going to know your tip-off to, uh, it's ready to go. Look at your child's natural schedule. I know with my child, he wakes up, he's wet. We change him. He eats, he falls back asleep. He wakes up from that nap dry, and then 20 minutes later, he goes. It's like clockwork. Look at your child's schedule, because that's going to let you know how to train them. And then the behavioral definition of toilet trained is no accidents day or night for 30 consecutive days. That's the textbook definition. Now, it might be that eh, they went 28 days, they had an accident, and then they went 28 more days. Oh, that's not textbook toilet trained. I would consider that child toilet trained. So the types of training. First is habit training or trip training. These are the orders in which you teach. First, you start with urine, then you go to bowel movements. You train for during the day, then you move to nighttime training. Then there's initiation training, and this comes last. Although a lot of times it happens at the same time as habit training. And initiation is when instead of saying it's 30 minutes, beep beep, time to go to the bathroom, now it's the child saying, hey, I need to go. So the first thing we're going to do is take data. And there we look at, are they ready? And then we're looking at patterns. Do they seem to urinate or have bowel movements around the same time every day? 11 o'clock, 1 o'clock, and 3.30, they're going to go. Is your child able to hold it for at least 30 minutes? Is the child's fluid intake affecting his voiding? Do you know that 20 minutes after drinking a cup of water, they're going to go to the bathroom? Is the child holding it for long periods of time? We have a lot of kids in preschool who... They don't go to the bathroom between eight and three, nine and three. When they get home, they flood that toilet. And again, are they a sprinkler or are they a flutter? And the first thing we do is start with diaper checks. So that pre-toilet training data, you should be doing a diaper check every 30 minutes. And I'll show you the data sheet next. Maybe on um, you know, 9.30, you write a U if they went number one, you write a B or BM if they went number two. Also jot down how much fluid they took because it might show you 30 minutes after drinking, they're going to go to the bathroom. An hour after drinking, they're going to go to the bathroom. And collect data throughout the whole day, at school, when we go back to school, at home, in childcare, at grandparents' house. Do it across settings. Collect data for at least seven days, including weekends. A lot of our kids have a different pattern on Saturday and Sunday as they do Monday through Friday. So this would be a data sheet that we could use. This would be for one whole week. The data sheet should go to school and home again. And at six o'clock, you'll check the diaper dry. So you'll put D, U for urine, BM for bowel movement. 6.30, you'll do the same thing. You'll go through the whole day. What does it tell us? 
How long between accidents? How often is your child peeing three, four, five, six, seven, eight times a day? Is there a pattern? How sensitive to fluid intake? Did you notice awareness of being wet? Is your child telling you or complaining when they're wet or soiled or do they not even care? Is your child able to stay dry throughout the night? Is he holding it during specific times? I love the child who can hold it during play and playground no matter what. They have to go so badly, but they can hold it till the end of playground. The minute they get to teacher time, Mr. J, I need to go to the bathroom. It's amazing how kids can hold it in certain situations and have to go every time. It starts to tell us they're holding it because they don't want to miss out or they're asking to go to the bathroom because they're trying to escape that demand. So here is a readiness checklist. Is there an underlying medical condition? If the child has, you know, no sensation below their waist, toilet training is a little bit harder. Can the child retain urine for at least a half hour to an hour? Is the child able to dress and undress him or herself? Does the child notice or act differently when diapers or clothing are wet? Is the child showing interest in bathrooming, hand washing, toileting, dressing, etc.? If they are, you're probably ready for toilet training. If they're not, it might mean your child's not ready. Don't despair. It only means your child's not ready yet. They are going to be ready. Develop a plan to work on those prerequisite skills, and then we'll start to see that progress, and then reassess in two to three months. Now, I just said that. My honest feeling is we can't always wait for the child to be ready. It really comes down is to mom, dad, grandma, grandpa, teacher ready. I have a 40-year-old brother with pretty significant special needs. He just got toilet trained about six months ago. He still doesn't care if he's wet or not. Are we going to wait till he's 45, 50, 60, 70 to toilet train? At some point, you know what? Staff is ready. Family's ready. Let's go. So when toilet training, don't use diapers, at least not during the day. Pull-ups are especially bad. I hear a lot of parents that say we're making progress. We move from diapers to pull-ups. They're very confusing to young kids. Why? Pull-ups go up and down, just like underwear, but it's safe to pee and go number two in. That's really confusing. Never use a potty, those little you know, plastic toilets, unless there's a physical disability that makes it necessary. Only use a true toilet. With a potty, there's no closure. There's no way to flush. It has to be emptied. That makes it harder to move to a true toilet later. And for our boys, we teach urine sitting down first. I know a lot of parents have a hard time with that, but we want to teach both sitting down, then we teach urine standing up later. For moms, it might make it a little bit easier. It eliminates that whole accuracy issue that some of our boys slash grown men have. This process is based on reinforcement. Make toilet training really fun. Make it really special when we're successful. Kids should not be tense when they're on the toilet. When you're tense, you don't go. Let them hold a book. Adults do it too. Let them have a toy. That's okay. Make sure they feel secure. You want their feet touching the ground. If they're short, maybe you put a seat so it doesn't look like they're going to fall in. Maybe you put a stool underneath their feet so they're not dangling. And it's better to start with as many toilets as possible to promote generalization. But work within your means. What I'm saying is you don't want to teach the child to only go to the bathroom in one bathroom. You want to do their bathroom, parents' bathroom, school bathroom, all the bathrooms they're going to come in handy with. What you do not want to do is say, Mr. John told me to use as many bathrooms as possible. Let me go knock on my neighbor's door and see if I can use their bathroom. Use as many bathrooms as you can within your means. Before starting, you want to determine the appropriate time and place to begin toilet training. This might be an awesome time to work on toilet training because you're stuck inside all day anyway. When you have a trip to Disney, not the best time to start. You want to strategically think Hanukkah, Christmas, not the best time to start toilet training. Spring break might be a great time. Get all the family members familiar with your plan and take in consideration major transitions. If you're about to have another child, probably not the best time to turn their world upside down. If you're moving into a new house, probably not the best time to turn the world upside down. So what are we going to do to prepare? Pick those powerful reinforcers. If you are using reinforcers, make sure it's something that you can only give them when they go pee or poo poo on the potty. 
So if you're using the iPad, it means that you can take the iPad away the rest of the day and only give it to them when they go. If you're using cookies, they should only get those cookies when they go. So make sure you're using something that you can deprive them of the rest of the day. You want to make sure they're getting enough fluid in, but you don't want to drown them with water. You don't want to give them so much that they're going every five minutes, but we want to up that fluid. You still want to take data to see how we're doing. When we're going to school, when we're going out in the neighborhood, in the community, make sure you send extra clothing. That also means extra shoes. Crocs or shoes like that are phenomenal for toilet training. Visual supports are fantastic. I pull down my pants, I pull down my underwear, I sit down, I go, I stand up, I pull up, I flush, I wash my hands for 20 seconds, and then I go. Social stories, which I can send you, also a great tool while we're doing the toilet training process. Here would be the data sheet while you're training. It's just the date, the time, where you are. Did they go number one? Did they go number two? Or did they do nothing? Or we could do the number three if it was both. So when we're scheduling toilet opportunities, early on, you always want to start going about 10 minutes before you think they're going to go. You really should be going one to two times per an hour. I like starting with every half hour unless their data says something drastically different. Schedule times around activities. You don't want to have to go in the middle of dinner. So when you're making that schedule, think about those times when you don't want to have to get up and go to the bathroom. Once we go through the process, collect data. After about five days, you want to look at it, see if we need to adjust the plan or not. So the first thing you're going to do is ask the child, do they need to go to the bathroom? If the child says yes, awesome, we're going to go to the bathroom. If the child says no, don't force them wait five minutes and then instead of saying do you need to go to the bathroom which is a question you're going to say it's time to go to the bathroom let's go to the bathroom now you've shifted it from do you need to go to i'm giving you instruction we're going to go and if i tell you take your child every half hour and i've seen this happen before when a child says hey ma i need to go to the bathroom please don't say but you have 15 more minutes before you have to go. If your child requests, I don't care where you are in that 30 minutes, 45 minutes, we're going and we're going right away. All successful toileting time should be reinforced with preferred reinforcers, even if they're having an accident while sitting on the toilet. Dry pants checks, you also want to reinforce. So if every half hour you pat them up, they're still dry. They're not getting that iPad, but they're getting a high five. Good job. You could use potty candy, M&M's, Smarties, cereal, raisins, special drinks or toys. But remember, they're only getting that reinforcer for successfully going on the toilet. If a child has an accident or when a child has an accident, no emotion. Please do not get mad. Do not get frustrated. Don't go, but I just took you five minutes ago. No scolding. You just say you are wet or you had a boo-boo. You should pee in the toilet. Let's go. Lead the child to the toilet, sit him there for a few seconds, and then reinforce them if they go. In the bathroom, the child should be as independent as possible. Let them do as much as they can for themselves. Have the child sit for no more than two minutes. I really don't like going over a minute. If they don't go, say good job trying. Only let them flush when they do go. Do not let them have the fun of flushing if they don't go. If they're successful, Oh my God, that was so amazing. High five, flush the toilet, get your reinforcer, record your data. Side note, make sure they finish going before you start jumping up and down, going crazy. The first time I toilet trained a child, they started going to the bathroom. I started jumping up and down. The child imitated me jumping up and down, cover me head to toe in urine. Please wait before they finish, before you start reinforcer. Use those task strips, use those social stories. Email me if you want a copy of any of them. But what if? They're afraid of sitting on the toilet. Allow them to sit without taking their clothes off. Let them sit with the seat covered. Take turns sitting. I sit, you sit. I sit, doll sits, you sit. Sit together. Add those physical supports. Sing a quick, we're sitting on the potty song for a minute, and then get up. If they're afraid of flushing, don't make them flush. Let them cover their ears. Give them a warning or let them flush. If they're obsessed with flushing, Cover the handle so they only get to flush when they go. We're gonna to move to night training second. Allow them to wear a night, uh, diaper during nighttime, and this will usually evolve on its own. 
remember, you and the child need to be ready to start the toilet training process. Thanks.